Well hello YouTube and welcome to my video using the PMDG 737 Next Generation Airplane and Microsoft Flight Simulator X. In this video I'll be demonstrating a flameout landing in Brussels with uh, both engines flamed out. In a QRH this is called the loss of trust on both engines, non-normal checklist. And the memory items are for the co-pilot. Captain will be pilot flying in this case in manual flight and the co-pilot will put the engine start switches to the flight mode here which powers all the igniters. However since you're on battery power only with no AC power since the engines have failed you will be using the right igniter only which is on the AC standby bus. The left one is on the AC transfer bus and becomes available as soon as you put the APU online, the APU gen. So start switches flight and then he will pull the start levers into the cutoff position verifying the blue lights here, the engine valve and the spar valve closed lights, first bright blue then dim blue effectively closing the fuel valves and he will see a drop in the EGT. Wait a few seconds and he'll put the engine start levers back into the idle detent and then he will monitor the engine parameters if the engine is going to restart or not he should ideally at least be able to start one engine because on one engine you can already stay level uh, but if, if you're lucky you can restart two engines so that's the memory items of the QRH loss of trust on uh, both engines and there's a lot of more read and do items that the co-pilot has to do at that point but when trying to restart the engines what he should look at when he places the levers in the idle detent is that the start is progressing slowly, that's normal. It could take up to three minutes for a, an engine restart in flight, but if after 30 seconds parameters are not increasing, then he would repeat the process, place them in cutoff again, put them in the idle position, and so on and so on. In the meantime, below 240, you would have to start the APU. At high altitude, it could be because you're starting the APU from battery power only, it could be possible that you can't start it so it's recommended to wait till 24,000 feet and another thing to note is that the captain will be pilot flying since the co-pilot will lose his instruments here and there will be no autopilot and no uh, electric trimming only manual trim using the handle here and you'll have a Christmas tree effect so a lot of lights on because you lost all AC power so captain is pilot flying and at above flight level 270 he'll keep a speed of 275 knots according to the QRH however keep in mind that at high altitude an indicated airspeed of 275 knots will actually be above your MMO speed your maximum operating speed or red barber pole but once you uh, descend to lower altitudes the Mach uh, actually you get a larger margin to the maximum speed so you could fly at 275 knots till flight level 270 below that 300 knots and starting from flight level 200 which is here 20,000 feet you would go to up speed or clean speed without flaps which is uh, the best glide speed for the furthest range and there's basically three ways of restarting an engine in flight the first one if you're lucky there is an auto relight capability of CFM engines so the system detects a sudden drop in N2 or when the engine is below sustainable idle speed it will power all the igniters and you have a successful or you have a good chance of restarting the engine in flight this is correctly simulated in PMDG if I program an engine flame out it will actually relight in flight so until now I, have, I haven't found a, a way to simulate a, a total engine flame out in PMDG because the engine just relights itself. Um, the other way if you're not lucky to do an in-flight restart is either a windmilling start or the crossbleed start. So this means a windmilling start that's why the captain needs to fly these speeds and the co-pilot will be verifying the uh, N2 gauges because if the N2 drops below 11% you can forget about a windmilling start you'll have to revert to the crossbleed start which means that you'll you you'll use APU bleed air to start uh, either engine. Okay, so let's get started then. I skipped the uh, simulator forward a bit so to save them st some time. We've got now uh, 51 DME to go. So let me check in the FMC here, the route page to Brussels, departure, arrival, ILS Alpha 25 left, legs, let me put center fix on top, Inman course 250 for an extended center line. 
take runway 25 left, put it in a fixed page. That gives me the DME to the runway threshold in its ref page. Frequency of the ILS 25 left is 108.9, course 245. This is actually not correct due to an ARAC update of uh, BMDG software that is not uh, the same as the FSX Flight Simulator X frequencies. In the Flight Simulator, the frequency for the ILS is 110.3, and here in NAF2 I've got 114.6, which is Brussels VOR, and ADF is Oscar Bravo. So let me verify that here on the RMI, ADF1 selected. And that's also a bug, I think, in BMDG, because we're well within range of the ADF frequency, so Oscar Bravo should appear here, which means that it's identified. And here is Bravo Uniform Bravo, which is the VOR in Brussels. Okay, let's go to the FMC and program the failure. BMDG setup, aircraft, failures, and as I said before, when I do uh, a failure of uh, the engines, a simple flame out, it will actually restart, it will do an auto relight in flight, so I'm gonna do an engine severe damage armed in uh, let's say 20 seconds, something like that, and I'll do the same for the second engine, engine 2 armed, yes, 20 seconds, execute, put it back in a fixed page. So what you'll see with a severe damage is that the N1 is zero, or if the N2 is zero, that means it's not turning and that's a damage. If it is turning, it's just a flame out. There it is, engine failure number one, with an engine fail indication. N1 is zero, so that's severe damage. Engine fail on engine two, N1 is zero, N2 is zero as well, so that's severe damage. So autopilot, of course, disengages and the trim doesn't work, the electric trim, so you'll have to use your hand on the trim wheel here. And in the meantime the co-pilot would start the APU at this point since we're below flightable 240. Put the start switches into the flight position, which powers the uh, right igniter, since we're still on battery. And then he will put the start levers into the cutoff position, checking that those blue lights are on, bright blue then dim blue, so the fuel valves are closed. And as you can see we've got a whole Christmas tree here of all the failures due to loss of AC power. Speed is decreasing, leaving flightable 200. And as you can see the first officer instruments are blank, CDU is blank, lower display is blank. So only the standby instruments my primary or my electronic attitude director indicator and EHSI are working and the CDU on battery power. So as soon as that APU generator is available I'll put it online on both buses, both sides. EGT peaked, EGT dropped. And in the meantime, altitude check 18,000 feet for a 3 degree glide. If you want to some thumb rules about gradients and uh, angles and so on, check the description below in the video. 18,000 is 18 times 3, that's 30, and 24 is 54 miles, and we're at 29 miles, so that's way too high for a 3 degree. However, for the gear down and flap 40, the descent rate will be 1,000 feet per nautical mile instead of 300 feet per nautical mile. So check the description below if you're interested. In the meantime, APU gen is available. Put it online, there it is. Transfer buses are powered. A whole bunch of systems are restored now. Switching my flight director off here. And I'll pitch up for 210 knots. In the meantime, the MCP panel has been uh, recovered so I can set MCP speed to up speed, 210 knots. That gives me the best glide angle. So in the meantime the co-pilot would be doing his memory items for the loss of trust on both engines, which is the start switches flight and engine start levers cut off them back to idle detent. 
However, I've simulated here uh, severe damage, so those memory items are different. In fact, then you continue with uh, all the throttle disengage, and then the start levers cut off and override and pull on the fire handles. That's the memory items for uh, severe damage. And if you're at high altitude, since the cabin is uh, cabin altitude is climbing due to the failed engines, which are not providing bleed air anymore to the packs, um, you could get an intermittent cabin altitude warning horn. So press the button for the horn cutout, put on your oxygen mask, establish crew communications, pressurization mode, selector in manual, close the outflow valve, and try to maintain cabin pressure as long as you can. Passengers have oxygen for about 12 minutes. Anyway, with this uh, scenario, you're not going to dive and do an emergency descent uh, due to this, so... Altitude check now is 14,300 times 3 is uh, 30 and 12, 42. So I'm just thinking for the gear down on the flaps. That's 1,000 feet per nautical mile, so 14,000 is 14 miles and we're coming in range. So um, you need to keep in mind that at up speed, 210 knots, you need to decelerate to the VRF speed of uh, about 140, so that's 70 knots difference, 70 knots. The deceleration rate is about uh, 1 nautical mile per 10 knots, so that's 7 miles that I need to decelerate. We have 14,000, so 14 miles for the full config, and we are at 16, so in any moment I will have to be configuring to full flaps and gear down. Put the auto brakes at maximum. Okay, 13,600 feet. Full config is 13.6 miles. We're getting close, so okay. Putting the gear down. And flaps one, speed check flaps one. There's the marker, the bug for flaps one. If for some reason or another you're still on battery power, you have no AC power, then the flap indicator will not work. It will appear as if the flaps are not traveling. But if you do select flaps with the lever and you get these bugs here, that means the flaps are traveling. So just a thing to note. Okay, we can see the runway there. Approach lights in sight. I'm going to continue decelerating. Speed checked and altitude 12.3. 12.3 miles, we're 11.9, we're high. I'm gonna help him a bit with the speed brakes and continue extending the flaps. Flap 5 selected. In the meantime, he, of course, the co-pilot would have called a mayday and requested assistance, uh, fire brigade on, brigade on standby and keep an option open to land on 2-5 right. Prepare the cabin for emergency landing with a brace position. Pulling out the speed here, 10, 11,000 is 11 miles, we're 9.5. You could also make uh, steep turns to lose altitude, which I'll do now. And at this point you could also already sidestep to 2.5 right if you want. Okay, set the VREF here for flap 40. One thirty seven target speed one forty two. Making turns ten thousand feet should be ten miles, we're seven point nine, we're high. And we have almost flaps forty now. Cancel light here. Speed brakes are still out. Keep your hand on the speed brakes if you have them extended. Still high. Check your speed. Don't go below the target speed. Heading on QFU, 246 for 25 right. Advise the tower we're taking 25 right, making turns. 8,600 feet, 8.6 miles, we are at 6.6. .6. We're high.
disregard the GPWS bank angle. You only have one chance, so if you're high you really need to do something about it. You can't miss the runway here. 7,000 feet, 7 miles, we're 5.8. distance to uh, threshold 25 right is uh, a bit more than the 25 left as you can see six thousand feet six miles were 5.2 still a bit high speed brake still out it'll work out fine what you also can do is put the MCP altitude here at zero feet as you can see and then you can see here the green banana on the EHSI here the green banana shows you where you will reach the ground if you pull up the nose the banana moves further away from you as you can see and if you dive more steeply so try to keep that banana on the runway threshold 4,300 feet, 4.3 miles, we're 3.7. I'll keep the speed brakes out for the time being. This is the outer marker. Normally on the ILS, this the altitude should be around 1,400 feet, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Now we're 3,800. Three thousand three hundred feet, three point three miles. We have two point seven. That's to the threshold of two five left. I'm looking at two five right now. Put the green banana on the threshold of two five right. The green banana is actually the point where you will reach the altitude set in the MCP altitude window. Now I've set it at zero. That means the ground. Actually, elevation is one eighty feet in Brussels. setting Q&H here, it's the same as standard anyway, so... If you go too fast towards the red band there, then you get the flap load relief and the flaps will automatically retract from 40 to 30. Okay, speed brakes in, arm the speed brakes, green light. and start the flare maneuver way way sooner because uh, otherwise your sync rate is too high okay that's touched down check that the brakes are working max brakes no reversers and check the speed brakes are out and that's it hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching